I'm back. It's been a hell of a long time since I posted a video. The last one actually was Australia, Lady Musgrave Island. Got to be six months ago. So yeah, a lot has happened since then and I thought before I just bang out another video, I'll make a little intro and tell you what to expect in the upcoming episodes. Right now I'm in Austria. Since I've been back, I've been busy trying to get my little chicken legs ready to get into snowboard. I've been out uh, split boarding in the mountains here a little bit. My legs are so weak because the last six months I haven't really been walking much. I've been sailing and it's been probably the most enjoyable and incredible six months of my life. I'm pretty old, so that might sound pretty uh, unbelievable, but I think it's true. So I left Australia in June, sailed across to Honiara in the Solomon Islands, checked in there, and then spent about two months in the Solomon Islands. I stopped in at Kavieng, on the northeastern tip of Papua New Guinea, to reprovision for three days, and I sailed about four days over to another big lagoon, and then sailed pretty much eight days straight over to Indonesia, well, West Papua. So every Friday for about the next 15 weeks, I'll be dropping an episode. If you want to get on board for this little series, push the subscribe button, push the notifications bell so you get an update when I release it. And uh, once you get into the swing of them, and if, if, if you really like them and want to support the ongoing next year, the series I'm going to make, consider swinging over to my patron site and, and having a look there and maybe becoming a patron, becoming part of my community. Um, and allowing me to do this more and better. Learning by doing is my mantra and I'm hoping I'm getting better at this. Anyway, enjoy. I know I did. It was amazing. Welcome to Learning by Doing. In this episode, I meet Tom, my new crewmate, reprovisioned the boat and set sail from Gladstone in Australia across the Coral Sea to Honiara in the Solomon Islands. <laughs> So it's go time. We're in Gladstone. Tom, my new crewmate, has arrived. His mother drove him up from the Gold Coast. And we skated down to the supermarket with our bags and, and got our last supplies. Tried to think of everything we would need and uh, all the things we wouldn't be able to get in the Solomons. Uh, got a few luxuries, some Tim Tams and chocolate and cheese and things like that. Packed it all into the bags and got back to the boat and um, yeah, started packing it away, labeling everything, labeling the tins, getting rid of the plastic and cardboard and all the extra uh, packaging that we wouldn't wouldn't need and it would just be, be extra rubbish we'd have to carry. Stored everything away and then and then I climbed up the mast one last time to check the rigging, check everything was good. Um, it was all perfect up there. We are ready to go. We've got everything dialed. Weather's looking good. What do you reckon? You looking forward to it. First time offshore and can you get cracking? So it's been a bit over a week and it's gonna be good. How nervous are you? Getting can oh not at all that. No. Just buzzing, just buzzing. As soon as we got out of the marina into the main shipping channel in, in Gladstone, um, there was a bit of breeze so we pulled up the sails and sort of dodged a few big coal ships and made our way out. It took about an hour to get out out through the the northern passage and then yeah we're in the ocean on our way so it's 5 p.m now we've been sailing about seven hours it's sunset we've been pretty much bashing straight into the wind this whole time um, i knew it though it's an easterly at the moment um, we're just trying to get started really but it's going to be like this all night so it won't be very comfortable but the winds are pretty minimal, it's about 20 knots, it's, it's all pretty calm, it's pretty good. Tom's feeling a little bit green around the gills and has been in bed for a couple of hours, just taking it easy. That'll start coming right once he's had some time out at sea. Just been reading and looking at the ocean, not doing too much. Been feeling a bit weird today, a bit strange, I didn't feel this way last time I left shore. Um, a little, yeah, feeling a little bit sad. I'm, I guess I'm missing Ilva. There's two voices in my head. One of them saying, 
why leave why leave the land it was safe there's, there's showers, there's toilets, there's internet, there's power, there's people to talk to, there's restaurants, there's everything there. Why would you want to leave and go out and be in the middle of the ocean where it's everything's unknown and there's, it's uncomfortable and, and so I've been having this little battle in my mind with these two, these two trains of thought today. Um, and yeah, obviously I know the other side. Just the exploring, the going outside the comfort zone to make you stronger and um, out here doing things that people, other people aren't willing to do, aren't willing to risk. Um, that, that's going to make me feel good. I, I'm sure tomorrow and, and the next days and when we arrive in the Solomons, that'll be an elation. It'll be an amazing feeling, that other side. But right now, the bit sadness and, you know, why I'm doing this is sort of still the stronger one right now but yeah it's all good get through this night and we'll be sweet the first day is always the hardest it's about 7 30 a.m now that was the first night not a very fun night um, as you can see we're hard on the wind just trying to keep course i've had to tack quite often just because of reefs and yeah these easterlies are, haven't backed off like they were supposed to so we're pushing straight into the wind and healing a lot and smashing, bashing on top of waves quite a lot as you can hear. So it hasn't been much fun and we haven't quite been going as fast as we anticipated just because we're bashing into waves. But we're making ground. Tom's been sort of sick I think. He's been in bed all night so I've been up here by myself. Um, had some little naps in between the chaos. but. It's been all good, we'll all get there, it's only going to get better. So it's been three days and three nights since we left Gladstone. The first two days were very rough, the harshest conditions I've ever sailed in. Um, just strong wind, straight on the nose, three to four meter swell, straight on the nose. Couldn't get out of it and just kept plugging through it. 48 hours pretty much of that. Didn't eat, I kept drinking but didn't eat anything really. Didn't sleep much, uh, yeah. And I was sol sailing solo because Tom was sick and in his bunk, didn't put his head out once in two days. I think he was more scared than anything, but. Anyway, we had a little stop over at Frederick Reef. It wasn't very calm in the anchorage, but it was nice to get on the little sand spit for a couple of hours and even got to go for a little quick snorkel and shoot a nice coral trout for dinner. Left there in the evening and um, sailed last night. Three o'clock in the afternoon now. But the, t the wind's turned a bit, we're on a beam reach now. This is perfect, this is what I wanted. This is so nice. I've just been reading and looking at the waves. And keep scanning the horizon, expecting to see a boat or some a plane in the sky or something, but it's just so vast, it's so we're so far away, there's just nothing human out here. I saw a flying fish this morning, but I haven't seen any dolphins or whales. Just different colours of blue basically out here. But it's very beautiful. I slept probably 10 hours last night. I was waking up regularly to check everything, but just beautiful. I felt great this morning. This is the end of day number five. Sorry, it's so noisy here. This open transom and the cockpit and going this fast, there's a lot of water rushing around. It's been a really good day. I woke up feeling not very, not very stoked. We still had a long way to go and it was rough. Big side swell kept pushing the boat into the S-curves. Then I put some earphones in and listened to some good music and I steered the boat for three or four hours. It got a lot warmer today. I can start feeling that we're getting to the tropics. Another two and a bit days to go now. We did 176 miles in the last 24 hours, which blew my mind. That's a fast average. A lot of miles in 24 hours. The reason I was sort of pushing hard was this weather coming on Friday. Three to four meter swells and 25, 30 knot winds. and. Looks like we're going to stay ahead of that now, so I'm very stoked about that. First day six, it's Friday. I've just had a nice lunch. First time I've cooked in three days. And the reason I was able to cook is because I've decided to slow down. I've been pushing like mad for the last three days, trying to just get into Honiara by Saturday before dark. No real reason, other than, well, yeah, I know Tom would love to be there. He's been downstairs the whole time. I've been sailing this boat by myself and just felt myself running out of energy a little bit. It's real hard. The boat's, the 
boat's working hard. Now the wind's still over 25 knots, over sometimes over 30, so it's still quite rough. We've got three meter swells. It's fine, but just pushing for days on end. Going five knots or going eight knots is a lot, a lot harder. You're just healing a lot more. You can't really do anything. It just takes an effort to move around the boat. I'd run out of good quality snack food and was starting to eat chips and chocolate and just junk and I could feel my energy my, <coughs> my energy levels going <coughs> didn't sleep too good last night either unfortunately uh, Tom put all his wet clothes on my bed so I had a wet mattress salty and wasn't it wasn't very nice so I decided to slow down now I'm doing five five and a half knots and it instantly just made the boat move so much smoother and so that's why I cooked. You can see from that little video I made though that it was still a bit of an effort. You've still got to basically work one-handed and brace yourself on every every piece of corner you can find. In a way pushing gives you a goal. You're looking at the numbers, you're looking at the speeds, you're looking at the kilometers, the miles you're doing and it keeps you going but I think at about five, five and a half knots for the next two days we'll make it there Sunday morning instead of Saturday night come in early morning when it's light, be all chill. The boat is working half as hard now. That's good. So now I'm going to have a sleep in the afternoon. Well that was night number seven. The shittiest night so far. Squalls coming through all night, one after another. Um, I'd be downstairs trying to get some sleep and the head sail would start banging. Bum, bum, bum. I'd come up, see that the wind's turned straight onto our nose. It's up to 45 knots. So fill the heads out, turn down course 20 degrees, keep going with two reefs in the main, still doing six knots and yeah, go downstairs and try and get some more sleep. Five minutes later it would start bucketing down with rain, just absolute sheet rain. 20 minutes after that the, the wind would start dying down, the course would start going back up to more on a beam reach. So I'd go back upstairs, change course angle, Wait a few minutes, roll out some head sail, get back up to seven knots, go to bed. It was a dark night, you couldn't see any of this coming, it was just hitting. 20 minutes later the same thing again. And that did that eight or nine times in a row, just basically one squall after another with a 20 minute gap in between. So I didn't sleep much. Nothing broke, nothing, nothing was out of control. But boat handled it well. Rainbow, yeah, other than that, we've got a 100 miles to go now. We arrived into Honiara at about 10 a.m. By this time I'd got completely sick of Tom. It had been eight days at sea. I feel sorry for him. Um, he completely misjudged his, his abilities. He had a, basically a mental wipeout. So we got to Honiara. He packed his stuff up and went to a hotel and stayed a couple of days and then his mum got him a flight home. In the meantime, while he was doing all that, I was standing in queues for two days getting an uh, immigration passport stamp. It's been a, a long, tough voyage. My first offshore uh, passage, it was a real mental struggle for me, much more than I expected. I had real tough times coping at some stages. I was, you probably saw during the video, I was, I was pretty up and down. Um, but again, a lot of that was caused by my passenger and me thinking about it, if I had just had a clear mind and been by myself, because I ended up sailing the whole way by myself anyway, I learned a lot from that. To all your patrons that follow me now, thank you very much. I couldn't be more grateful. See you next time. Bye-bye.